What's up guys? My name is Rip. I'm here with JDCR. This show is called Winner's Mindset. In this show, we're going to be talking a little bit about some game theory and player mentality. Now, what are we going to talk about on the show, JD? You know, how is this show different than other shows? So, um, I wanted to talk about uh, like like general theory, like more than just the game tech end. And then I realized that there's nothing like, you know, when we watch, uh, go to YouTube and search for like info, then everything is all about the also game. So that's cool, but uh, I want to talk about something else. Right, so more about like the mindset behind how to actually play the games versus, you know, being technical within a game itself. Like, you know, how to backdash mm -hmm. cancel or something, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, okay, so before we get started, I just wanna say guys, this video is brought to you guys by Equinox. Make sure you guys check them out at equinoxgg.com. So first up, let's talk about some game theory. Uh, the first topic we want to talk about, or to kind of introduce this, I guess, would be GTO. Now, this is a poker term. It's called Game Theory Optimal. It's basically a way of thinking about a strategy that avoids exploitation that can happen if you make a specific play either too frequently or not frequently enough. That sound about right? That sounds all right, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so basically, if you if your opponent understands the strategy that you're doing, and you also understand that strategy because you're doing it, then this is the most optimal way to play uh, that gives mm -hmm. you the least amount of exploitation. Mm -hmm. Right? So let's try and apply this to something simple like rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. So rock, paper, scissors, we play rock, paper, scissors, there's only three options. Rock, paper, scissors. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, this, yeah, yeah. yeah I, got, this. <laughs> I got you, I got you. It's a scissor, it's a weird scissor. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, all right, there's only three options. Then the rock, paper, scissor, you can take at least, like, each option has take can take 33.3% each option. That Yeah? Okay. So, rock, paper, scissor, let's say, uh, just let's assume that you play 100, 100 game rock, paper, rock, paper, scissors, mm -hmm. and then you do each one, like, by like same percentage with the same percentage, which is 30, yes, 30, 30 percent, percent. Sure. Then your winning, your winning rate should be, uh, and this is, is very close to uh, 50. And okay. then since you do, you do, you do same, no, like different thing, each things with the same ratio, mm -hmm. then there's no way, you know, this is very optimal. And then there's no way you know, your opponent can uh, can read it, your strategy. Of right. course, he can read it, but once he noticed that, oh, this is playing optimal play, and then, but there's no exploit, exploit way about it. I see. So basically, like, a counter example of that would be, you know, say, I mean, obviously, if you play rock, paper, scissors, just one or two games, it's very hard to determine a strategy, right? Yeah, yeah, but if you yeah. play, like, 100 games, then yeah. I, if I say, I'm just going to do rock nonstop, obviously you'll start uh -huh. to recognize like, okay, that's very easy to beat. You know what I mean? I'm just yeah. going to start going paper the whole time. But yeah. by using this uh, ratio of doing it only 33% of the time for each one, it's very hard for mm. me to come up with a counter strategy to beat that, mm. right? Yeah. So that's yeah. the basic idea there. And you know, mm. even if our math is a little bit wrong, I think we just kind of wanted to introduce the idea of ratios to yeah. you guys. So mm -hmm. in this idea, the ratios that we're uh, demonstrating would be, you know, 33% of rock, 30% of paper, 33% scissors, versus the weird idea I had before, which was 100% rock with 0% <laughs> paper, 0% scissors, yeah. right? So that's the uh, basic idea with ratios. Uh, yeah. So obviously, with the 100% rock thing, when you have an opponent that's doing something like that, you want to exploit that weakness. How do you, like, what when you're playing a fighting game, what are you yeah. looking to exploit specifically? Let's use Tekken as an example. So in Tekken, probably, um, I try to explain, hmm, I would, I would explain like how he does sidestep, like he sidestep, I would say the like habit or like how often he crouch, something like that. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. And then other than them, like, uh, like the, other than them, I would say, uh, I try to read it as like optimal. What does that mean? Try to read it as you know, optimal. Something impossible to read, like uh, you know, fifty-fifty mix-up or like rage drive timing. That should be kind of optimal, right? And obviously, this is something that you learn uh, more about a player as you're playing the set itself, right? But yeah. I think you know, you said something like sidestep a little bit, whether they crouch or something. Mm -hmm. uh, you also mm -hmm. probably want to be looking for whether they like to hit buttons a lot, whether a very patient player, uh, mm -hmm. you know, how they respond to pressure, etc. Like, mm -hmm. like for example, if you do like Dragonov running two. 
You know, like yeah. you probably use that as example to gather information, right? Yeah. So uh, I, for example, this is actually a very specific situation. So I do uh, learning to uh, learning to the Dragunov, and then it gives me a plus frame, six plus six frame, yeah, right, on block. Okay. So sure. uh, even though even though I get plus six frame, it's not it, it's not like I'm super safe, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have okay. Let's say I have some option which is down two for low move and down for the one mid mid move or mm -hmm. another option maybe another learning tool. Mm -hmm. But uh, they all have a very uh, kind of they all all actually are dangerous. I would say. Down right. to you know your opponent low parry is gonna make make you huge damage, and down for the one if it's side step also it's gonna be a uh, super risky, mm -hmm. and then learning two as well you can side step yeah. So this is where I use uh the uh, the, the you know the ratio as well ratio and then also timing I wanna read my uh, opponent. Sure. So, so basically, first of all, mm -hmm, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, first of all, I gotta use all the options so that he never realize or never exploit me. And then at, at the same time, of course, I wanna try to look at him like, oh, what is his defense option? If like he's playing like maybe like uh, some character that's half kick, then I I'm very aware of half kick, but I have to take the risk of the possibility that he had he does half kick. Mm -hmm. So I do down to he has he does a half kick. That's totally fine, but. You know, oh, then I started to uh, think more hop kick, then maybe size them more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically, from what I'm gathering from what you're saying is, you have this kind of idea for ratio that you've yeah. basically built up from this one situation with running two right on block, uh, yeah. and you've kind of, I guess, uh, you know, figured out the ratio yourself based on all the experience you've had in the past. All right. So that's a very specific example. Uh, let's mm. explain a little bit about. A more generic way of uh, figuring out ratios oh. for a game like Tekken. Oh, okay, yeah. So uh, ratio, I, I think that it might sounds very awkward for a uh, few years right now, but this is how actually I would call it. Maybe I would do. This is the way I would explain. Maybe so ratio is. Uh, you know, there are so many options and move, and especially after like certain situation where frames happens. Mm -hmm. So the, I would say the more like the more you have uh, the more option you have, then you have to uh, defense or offense be better yourself because uh, your opponent have has to uh, think more about your option, right? So you're so, saying the more options that I have as a defender, the more it's going to make my opponent who's on offense have to think about, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. So what? Uh, so um let's say each move each option in this game has a very can make a very uh, huge damage yeah like side step down for two or low parry or sometimes you can you want to choose safe option which is just block or backdash yeah mm -hmm. so uh it it all this all different option has a different damage or different i would say risky maybe also different delay when it's a rift Right, mm -hmm. so you need to uh, you should make the ratio depends on the uh, based on the uh, all the infos that I just say. Right, so basically you're yeah. talking about like uh, you know defensive options, uh, movement, uh, you know crouching or standing, hitting buttons, you know if you have a hop kick, yeah. etc., uh, yeah. low parry, etc. Like you kind of weighing all of those risk rewards uh, and making a ratio based off all of that. Which sounds like mm -hmm. really intimidating. Like I think if you're a new player and you heard that, you'd be like, "What the hell? That's too much to process. What am I supposed to do?" I, you know? I, I wouldn't think so. I never thought about thought like this. Never. <laughs> right. And yeah. the thing is, like you know, when you have a game like rock paper scissors, there's only three yeah. options. It's kind of yeah. straightforward, right? But when you're yeah. playing a game like Tekken or any other fighting game, it's yeah. like rock paper scissors, like a hundred times. You know, every couple seconds. Yeah. Right. right? Yeah. It's like yeah. every interaction. Like uh, for example, Kazuya, you block is like forward four. You know, yeah, oh, like yeah. all of a sudden it's a new uh, ratio system, right? Same thing like if you block Dragon of Running 2 we talked about earlier. All of a yeah. sudden you're in a different ratio set of what you should be doing or not doing. Then, okay, let's say uh, I pull up Kaja's forward 4, yeah? Mm -hmm. I don't know the exact frame. Is it plus 3 or plus 4? Maybe. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing actually. Mm -hmm. Because we still have so many options that can 
they can break his attack. Yeah. Right. Because he doesn't yeah. have to use that frame advantage. And I think that's an important part that people don't think about frame advantage. Like when yeah, you yeah, have yeah. that like plus three, you could still do a 20 frame attack afterward. Just, you know, <laughs> it's, it doesn't matter, right? Like, yeah, I have plus three, yeah. you're not going to hit a button. So I'm going to do something even slower, you know? Okay, it's, it's not like it doesn't matter. It matters a little bit. Okay? Sure. It, yeah. de it definitely matters, but I'm it saying in the, term of, yeah, yeah. in the term of ratios, you know, in that sense, right? Mm, okay. uh, like yeah. your opponent could do crazy things still that could beat you yeah. if you don't maximize that frame advantage yeah so what is the option after his fourth four like we are playing low your character I'm you low. have a yeah <laughs> we have a half kick that is mm -hmm. a hair sweep or dark back four you have a safe option back dash yeah you mm -hmm. have i can just block yeah side step you have also down two, down two, down three. two three, crazy one, yeah. yeah. And also, if it leaves me yeah. full crouch, I can go straight into my slide or while standing. Mix yeah, up. yeah, yeah. And then, of course, you know, down two, three, hop kick. Down two, three is the most dangerous one, yeah. Right. But still makes great damage. So mm -hmm. maybe it is, uh, just, let's say it's actually like very dangerous, but very uh, rewarding. Re rewarding, maybe? Mm hmm. And the hop kick less dangerous, also rewarding. Mm -hmm. Like this, no risk, no rewarding. Sure. Size tab maybe a little bit dangerous, but yeah, it depends more on the rewarding. patch version. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yes. Something like this. You you should you should actually you wanna be like really good at this game. You should actually calculate all the infos and then situation mm -hmm. like. The, uh, in the game, time, energy bar, and everything. But you know, this is too much, too much. Yeah, yeah? it's a, you, nobody. They, nobody actually nobody does, does it. it. <laughs> but <laughs> no. But when you're playing in the match, like you do take all those things into consideration a little bit, right? Like yeah. you look at the life bar, the time yeah. left, and you say, yeah. "Okay, I need something bigger now in this situation yeah. than I would normally." Right. Yeah. That, so it changes yeah. your ratio. So there's always these other factors that are influencing the mm -hmm. ratios to make you the decisions mm -hmm. that you're trying to make. Yeah. Right. And even like you said, my down two three, obviously it's not something that a lot of players should have like an eighty percent. Anytime you block a Kazuya forward four, eighty <laughs> percent down two three. Bad idea, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But if you if you make the Kazuya player think that just a little bit, then they might not yeah. take that frame advantage on, or they might only do like a you know something simple afterward, like a, a down forward four or something, you know, for their frame advantage. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. Exactly. So uh that's why I say you more option you have, the more benefit. He has uh -huh. to think of think think a lot, yeah. And then so I so so uh I noticed that like some players have a uh, this kind of problem with the ratio. They are doing this one too much or they are they are not doing this at all. Like some players are very patient or defensive. They are not doing they are not doing half kick at all. Or some hmm. people, some players are doing like always half kick, you know. Yeah, but, that's interesting. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, that makes me think that, you know, players need to really kind of assess all the different uh, things that they should be putting into their ratios. You know, I feel like yeah. they're not looking at all the available options that are presented yeah. to them. But before we get there, you know, what about being optimal online versus being optimal offline? Do you think it's the same thing? Is it different? Is it the same game? How do you feel about that? Mm, actually, wow, online and offline. You know, the, everybody knows different. I think it's up to you. Like, you can play the way you want, yeah? Mm -hmm. But the different, Definitely there's different and then uh, that is uh you go online. Online is uh more people, I think, and then longer set I say. Or it can be uh more people or uh shorter set if you want. Mm -hmm. Right? And sure. then online is online is less definitely less people or longer. You wanna play this guy like long. Yeah. So you think so what do you recommend to people? Doing longer sets online or playing as many people as possible? I think I would recommend the second one, I think, because uh, you play on online and then you play. Oh, no, it's actually, actually, you know what? Online definitely tells you can take something from online. Something like uh, this is actually a good, good, uh, good way to learn optimal play because still we have uh, so many, uh, we met so many people mm -hmm. that we don't know each right. other. We don't know, we don't know them. He doesn't know me yet. Mm -hmm. So this is actually, I think that you can practice optimal way here. Right. Yeah. So uh, like high level players, they go to like online, they meet like, even like pro players, they beat like blue rank, purple rank very easily, right? Mm -hmm. Because they know the optimal way. 
Right. And a lot of that yeah. is defensive, I feel like, right? Not even necessarily offensive. Or do you think it's both? Uh, which one? Offensive and defensive or mainly defensive? Like, what do you think pro players use uh, to do that? Uh, Specifically like for night? check-in. Yeah. I'm not sure about, like, of course, like, others. But I'm, you know, I'm mm -hmm. kind of defensive player. Right. And then online, I would prefer defensive because uh, I know more optimal way, which is, like, kind of fundamental safe so uh yeah right and in, defensive in general like i think a lot of people think that your strength is more like sidestepping and movement right like you're yeah. not the guy who's hitting buttons and <laughs> counter-attacking <laughs> back a lot of the time yeah if somebody puts you in a situation uh, uh right you're going to be more likely to sidestep or use movement rather than yeah. try to counter with uh pressing yeah. a button or interrupting back yeah yeah so actually that's when i use hockey with the armor king Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is it is pretty good, man. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't this, is, this is ratio, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's ratios, right? I, I, we didn't really talk about this, but you know, you have a bunch of different characters now. You have uh, Dragonov, Heiachi, Armor King, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's kind of your main character that we've seen you use in tournament. You know, mm. how do you how do you approach those different characters? You mean like? In, in terms of ratios, of... in terms of play style, oh. you know, because obviously, like, like I just said, like your strength is size, stem, and movement. But is that yeah. the same for all those characters? Definitely not. Definitely <laughs> not. Like, uh, like Dragon Up, of course, you have to be uh, offensive, maybe, and then he has uh, also good movement compared to the to to the others. Mm -hmm. So maybe more moving, more offensive, and then more create stuff because Dragonov get easily his in initiation when he won like one jab is has a good hitbox yeah mm -hmm. but armor king maybe uh like half and half half offensive half defensive maybe and his movement is all right his sweep punish is actually good i i i like his electric so maybe more back there something like that mm -hmm. but hey hachi he's very difficult he is very difficult because his attack basically like 50 50 optional is very weak, yeah. Mm -hmm. In so comparison. maybe less, less so, yeah, yeah, right, less offensive, yeah. And then also his defensive option is also not that good. He doesn't have a half kick. His movement is just all right. His mid mid punishment is not that. It's all right, yeah. Yeah. So less defensive, less offensive. Then what? <laughs> I don't know. It's a, you know. So maybe it's pacing more. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I just thought that was curious, you know, because we were talking about the ratios, and I thought, man, you've got all these different characters, and if your strength is this, yeah. then how do you really treat that? Uh, so I think that's a pretty good summary, you know, for all your characters, and basically of how people should approach online play in general. Uh, basically, mm -hmm. you think, play as many people as possible, and that'll make you uh, figure out your optimal strategy best. Unless you do just something something stupid you want to do all day, like create a crazy hazy kasuya or mm -hmm. create a sliding or rising rising two with the low. <laughs> What's yeah. crazy about that? It sounds fine. <laughs> I said all day, all day. All day. Okay, okay, okay. Alrighty. So let's talk about player mentality when you're trying to improve in the game. What do you recommend, mm -hmm. JD? Like to improve our mentality. Yes. Like you know, you're trying to improve in the game. Uh, yeah. What kind of things do you have to do mentally uh, to do that? So uh, there are there are few things that you can do pr like practice with. Is first is like kind of be objective with the game, and then I would say second thing is like mm, don't be uh, don't be too afraid of trying new things. Mm -hmm. And then third one maybe maybe like should I take a break maybe yeah. Take breaks. Take yeah, I get breaks, that always yeah. helps mentally, right? Okay, so let's yeah. let's start with the first one. So you said be objective yeah. about the game. Like, what do you yeah. mean by that? Be objective. You know, I uh, I get this kind of question a lot, like on my stream or you know, an event that hey JD, I can I how, how can I beat this character? What should what am I supposed to do this situation? Something like that. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to kind of answer, but this is like too specific and too 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 many yeah right so be objective i'm saying is um like you should see the game or a situation like the way it is in the game you some people think like think too much or yeah too much that they don't see the frames or they don't see the situations 
yeah mm -hmm. so uh, i had uh, i have a one friend one friend that he is always asking me hey gd how can i be thief yeah right but uh when i okay then why why don't you play so in front of me and then i watch his play mm -hmm. and i i him play and then he just press like, anything he wants. <laughs> <laughs> Like okay. Steve is Steve is his Steve has got like cross frame and then oh Steve wanted to like pressure and then he gets so scared and press something and then he get you know counter hit by a back one yeah sure and then I'm saying you know why would you press something and his answer is because this is this is so scary <laughs> I'm like that's your mental <laughs> your mental say it's scary but the mm -hmm. answer is that you can be patient yeah because right. that's the way Steve fights, yeah? The okay. so game says, the game says, you know, no, no press button. Everybody knows it about Steve, but mm -hmm. me, you, everybody gets so scared sometimes. Yeah, Because it's so I good. Think, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so good, but yeah. the game says, nothing, yeah. Yeah, by the way, you know, for everyone watching, I'm not the friend asking about Steve advice, you know? <laughs> I've played of MYK uh, Steve experience. But I guess what you're trying to say, though, is when you're saying be objective about the game, it's if you're fighting a character like Steve Fox, you have to understand yeah. his strengths and take that for what it is and don't try to fight against that. Does that yeah. sound about right? That's kind of, that. yeah, that's a good example of the uh, that thing, yeah. Being objective? Like, what, what's another example of being objective? Being objective... Hmm, being objective... How about being objective against like Ling Xiaoyu AOP? Oh, that's so scary. <laughs> yeah. But that, that's the thing, right? Like you have to understand that that's going to happen, right? Oh, okay. I have another good example. Mm -hmm. So this is Dragon of. So I tried to learn Dragon of a lot back in Tekken Tech 2 and then in the beginning of Tekken 7. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there is, there is one move that I was afraid, afraid of using. Uh -huh. That which is back four three, okay. The mid mid high, yeah. Yeah, because obviously this is mid high that where players should are supposed to uh, crouch the second yep. one mm -hmm. and then punish it. Exactly. But no one does that actually in tournament in rank game. No one, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I was so afraid of it, yeah. Because, because it's mid high, and you you would know to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then and then and then I was like. I was doing, you know, so doing just back four three, and then I realized, oh, this is actually a very good move. You know, everybody say this is a good move. Okay. Okay, right? Right. This, yeah. This so uh, I would say the moment that I'm saying I was saying this isn't good is like mm -hmm. my mental maybe, but the game says you are supposed to use it with the dragon or with the down two or learning two for mix up. Gotcha. So yeah. despite your own mentality being like. This is too scary to use. I shouldn't yeah. use this move. People will kill me yeah. for doing this move. Uh, you yeah. should have just been seeing that this move actually is effective in the game and doing it for that reason, essentially, even though it has yeah. risk associated with it. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. I think that makes sense. I think those are some good examples of uh, being objective about the game itself. Uh, the mm -hmm. other thing you said was don't be afraid Guys. of trying new things. Yeah. 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 How about talking a little bit about that? So, you know, people get sometimes, you me get sometimes too scared of one, one move or a certain situation, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then, but uh, the problem, maybe it's not a problem, but problem of uh, like most of players that they don't even try, they don't even try new things like playing online or playing offline. Maybe, mm -hmm. uh, maybe they don't see the, see the like benefit of trying things. Right. Like you go to rank and then you have to be, Sometimes you are supposed to do something totally different than you want to do, yeah? Mm -hmm. Even, so that's the way you learn like new new stuff and then new, yeah, something like new size tab or new spacing, new frame data, new hitbox maybe, yeah? You mm -hmm. have to, you should use all the different things, like including like one move or movement, sometimes create half kick and then ask, it's better of course, ask your opponent then what why did you get hit this move? And then what is the, uh, how does it feel like? What does it feel like? And then, yeah, anything like that. Mm -hmm. I think that people try to play too perfectly. 
you know they, they they're scared to make mistakes they're scared to get uh you know lose health you know in in a situation but i think they need to understand that you know in the course of like an online match or sometimes even in tournament you know if you're losing to something and you don't really know what to do you have to try mm -hmm. things you know and if you don't yeah, try yeah, those yeah. things you're never going to get the knowledge uh and get further uh you're just yeah. going to be stuck in the same place cuz you'd be like i tried to block it nonstop and i kept on losing so stop yeah. blocking you know try moving <laughs> try hitting buttons yeah. you know you have to yeah, try yeah. something different yeah cool but then maybe examples maybe mm -hmm. um what can be example maybe electric maybe electric is too scary but uh, you know it's obvious that you can size the left yeah and then punish it's hard but yeah <laughs> it's, yeah it's hard but yeah and there's nothing you lose like nothing you lose really playing online practice online Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. And that's the so. thing. People feel like they lose, though. You know, they're like, oh, my God, I have a three uh. loss streak online. What the hell, man? Like, this is not working. You know, <laughs> it, it doesn't mean anything. You know, you're supposed to be gathering knowledge and slowly getting better, I think. Yeah. And then also, uh, this is something different that, but the, I, I, uh, what, what she re read about like, uh, Daigo's interview or something like that, Daigo's mm -hmm. article, that he says that this is getting you crazy, that, you if you play this guy like a player mm -hmm. then you you have to play you have to beat this guy in different way like like b like i know in that different way sure you know that's pretty uh he blew your much, mind maybe <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the the idea behind that in general is just you know you don't want to get caught in doing the same patterns of things over and over, yeah. especially if it's mm -hmm. effective against an opponent, right? Because then you start yeah. building like, uh, you know, bad oh, habits yeah. essentially, right? Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. Or you know, even if it's a good habit, it's a bad habit in that sense. <laughs> it's it's kind of weird yeah. to explain, right? But yeah, yeah. Uh, you yeah. don't want to get stuck in like this. Uh, what do you call it when you're when you're doing like the same things over and over? Autopilot. You don't want to get stuck being this autopilot mode. Where you're like, I just okay. do these three things over and over and over, uh, and they work, and that's uh, it, right? Yeah, so yeah. I, I think I can agree with what Daigo says. I mean, he's he's a pretty smart guy too. You guys should check out that Daigo guy. He's uh, he's pretty good <laughs> at fighting games. Uh, so another tip you said that people could use to improve their mentality when trying to improve in the game: take breaks. Take breaks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why is take that breaks. good? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I know what <laughs> taking. I take breaks. I, I still want to sometimes, but I do. Uh, but yeah, talk a little bit about why you think that's good. So I think few reason in it, like you go online more, you play, you start the game very, with the very fresh mind. Oh man, I feel good. I want to do this. I want to rank up maybe, but uh, you last maybe for like 30 minutes or one hour, maybe mm -hmm. then, then you will kind of, you will be, you mostly will be doing like same things over and over to win or, or so to be, to get this specific round maybe. Mm -hmm. That's what I do with the Pakunam, you know, Pakunam flow <laughs> online. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's cheat. So, You're a cheater. Yeah, so what? I want to win and then just throw. <laughs> Winning isn't everything, JD. Come on. <laughs> okay, but still. Oh, okay. Still, I'm doing the same thing because that's the only move that I think cheap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is moment that I should take break, actually. Maybe. Because okay. I don't think of any. And then I'm doing the same thing over and over. Okay, so even when things are going good, uh, if yeah. you're doing the same thing over and over, you should take a break. See, when you said take breaks, I was thinking the other way. Like, man, I keep losing, I keep losing, I'm getting pissed off, I don't want to play anymore. You know, like, that's when I take a oh, break, so I don't, like, oh, want to hate the cool game. Too. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it's, take, it's useful. Yeah. yeah, and then I say that there are, two, like, few reasons in the take breaks part. And the mm -hmm. second reason is that, like, um, there is, a, like, when you take break, then like it's not when you are not actually playing the game, okay? So you can maybe watch, you can do something like that. Talk to your friends or watch videos and then also like don't watch videos like you wanna learn, but just just you know, just like take it simple, for entertainment, like, casual? Kind kind of casual, yeah. Hmm. Okay. That that yeah, that's like that's like, you know, no pressure, but still enjoying the game. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. I never really, like, I, I personally have kind of stopped watching a lot of videos. And in the past couple of weeks, I think I've started watching more and more stuff from people, mm. like whether it be even like combo videos or, you know, just like random mm. things that happen in matches. And now that mm. I've started doing that again, I feel like it's helped me, you know, kind of enjoy the game more again, which has been really fun for me, uh, you mm -hmm. know, separate from just, you know, actually playing myself and doing all that at mm. work, et cetera, et cetera. 
Yeah, that's the same, same, same thing. Uh, same reason. I don't want like video in my room, my by myself. I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. But instead, I want to be. I don't want to watch with my friend, and then or sometimes also want to talk about tech and that's more fun. Yeah, I think so too. So that basically wraps up everything, guys. Of course, we talked about some game theory here. We talked about some player mentality things when trying to improve in the game. One other thing I do want to mention, though, you know, we talked about GTO for poker and rock, paper, scissors game mm -hmm. strategy. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. one of the things that helped me when I was starting out was I read this book called Art of War by Sun Tzu. There's a lot of strategies for battle in here. Super boring book. You'll probably only read it about four pages at a time, but I highly recommend <laughs> it. Uh, yeah. it. It really helps, you know, setting your yeah. mind in the right place uh, when you're trying to compete at different things. Uh, anything else yeah, to tell him, JD? Yeah, something like that. Uh, something like the, you say you the book help you learning like all different things. Mm -hmm. Then it it happened to me as well. Like because uh, the ratio, like game theory, like rock paper scissors, those things. I never thought about it alone. Mm -hmm. I was I'm more like just play the game, man. What's the problem? <laughs> I'm like that kind of guy. Right. But uh, but I had to. I felt like I had to something some topics that I want to bring up to. Uh, make others you know make them more feel uh kind of get the get the game more like in the say in the like comfy way maybe mm -hmm. kind of you know like something theory some theories right. so i can explain more or, or or they can understand better maybe yeah. so hopefully all the things that <laughs> all the yeah. things that we talk about help you guys exactly yeah and i wasn't gonna do this but i'm gonna read you guys one little segment from this thing because You'll, you'll, you'll understand. It's, it's not specific about any game, right? So, example, here it is. One who takes position first at the battleground and awaits the enemy is at ease. One who takes position later at the battleground and hastens to do battle is at labor. Thus, one skilled at battle summons others and is not summoned by them. That sounds crazy. Like, what the hell is this guy talking about, right? <laughs> but when you apply it to a fighting game, you start thinking like, oh, so if I'm in the better position first, that's a good thing, you know? And that's you start like, thinking about that in Tekken with stages and the wall behind you, you know? If you control the positioning, that's good. You know, like, you get little nuggets yeah. out of that, out of that whole battle information. So, anyways, I highly recommend it, and I think you guys should yeah. check out stuff like that. <laughs> Books like yeah. this, you know, GTO, pro Strategies, RPS, etc. that we're talking about, there are other ways to help you get better at Tekken, even though they don't seem like they should. Uh, so I think that helps you, uh, and I think that's what I was trying to say in the first place. If you yeah. guys want to follow us, Check us our socials down below. Our Twitch and Twitter is below both of us. Uh, also, huge shout out to Equinox for sponsoring this video. Equinox dot no equinoxgg.com is where you guys can find mm -hmm. out more about them. Uh, and of course, yeah. if you guys, you know, you guys have comments down below on the YouTube. Let us know what do you guys want to hear from us next. You know, tell us what topics you'd like to hear about, and we'll try to mm -hmm. cover stuff like that. That about does it here, guys. I'm Rip. That's JDCR. We'll catch you guys next time. Peace. Bye. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs>